Coming up on the Delaware Way, the state treasurer is here. He's running for re-election, and he has a plan to get Delaware out of the cycle of budget crises. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. You may not be interested yet, but the political parties in Delaware certainly are. It's getting to be election time, and State Treasurer Ken Simpler is running for re-election. He joins us now. Uh, was it a hard decision for you to run for re-election? No, it wasn't a hard decision to want to. I love the day job. I love the, uh, more than I thought I even would, the governing aspect of what I do day in, day out is, is a fantastic role for where I think I can apply my skills. Um, we were just talking before we came on air just a little bit about the the auditioning for the job, the, the politicking, the, the, you know, that process. Uh, when the calendar turned over into 2018, I realized I had to, yeah, think real hard about do I want to go through that process again. But it's it's part of the education process for how I convey what it is I have done for the people of Delaware. So there's some way I should justify why they'd want to have me for another four years. So yeah, We'll get into the issues in one second. I want to stay with this for one second and just your decision making and running because you're a numbers guy, you deal with probabilities and you look at the state, you look at registration in the state and I know that you you buck the odds. You were a Republican that won in a, in a blue state, in a heavily Democratic mm -hmm. state. But you must look at it and say, okay, what's my, what are my probabilities of winning again? And you must think they're pretty good. You know, if it was purely a probability exercise, I wouldn't have done it the first time, right? It's a weighted probability. I have to think about the probability that I win and then, in theory, what I can do if I, if I win. And if that, if, that is, if that sounds like a good mix to me, the, 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 the weighting I give to winning versus the, the hopefully the good I can do, it's not just pure probabilities, right? Um, I, I think I have a plausible chance of certainly winning re-election. I hope that the people think that it, um, the opportunity they gave me has been justified and where I've focused my time and my energies, and I guess we'll talk about that a little bit, but uh, I couldn't tell you about exactly the waiting. Every race, I think, this is only my second race, and I think races are affected by national influences. Races are affected certainly locally as well, so uh, we'll find out. Um, right now, I don't have an opponent, so I don't know what issues that person might think are... Are, are you surprised by that, that nobody's even shown interest yet? I'm surprised, and honestly, I'm somewhat not disappointed because, let's face it, I mean, who wants to really have a knockdown drag out? But I also do think that it's important for people, especially in Delaware, we only get a few statewide people to run for office that, are, that hold positions of statewide elected um, public service. And I think each one of those is very important. So whether it's the state treasurer's office, whether it's the insurance commissioner, whether it's the lieutenant governor, or even the, the, uh, the attorney general, I mean, each one of these, the state auditor, all these positions I think are very important. And the only thing that I, that I would not like to see happen is that people don't get a really solid discourse around where our finances are. I mean, I'm the one person elected in state government that my job, if it's anyone's job, is to think long term about where we're going as a people, um, whether we've made good, sound fiscal choices. And to some extent, probably if I don't have an opponent, that maybe that discussion doesn't happen as robustly as it might if, if I did. Um, so you want to be challenged? I'd like the people Preferably to Preferably not in the primary. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you know, if there's honestly someone on either side that can do this job better than me, Larry, Please, no, I remember, I remember all the excitement when you were elected because the Republican Party was going through a downfall and diminishing and you were elected and you were, you were the white knight at that moment. You already said, oh my goodness, a Republican can win a statewide mm -hmm. election in the state. Look, Ken Simpler did it and immediately they put you in another job. You were supposed to <laughs> yeah, run for governor. You were supposed to run for senator <laughs> at that point and right. it turns out you just like the job you're in. I think even our state newspaper the day after I was elected, I hope it wasn't a reflection on me, but uh, said, why do we even have a state treasurer's office? <laughs> I think they ran editorial. Um, but no, I mean, it was very gratifying to win the first time on the idea that someone who does have, has no political background, has no, and, and, and I, I can't say I've had a public service background, um, but who does have, you know, a career spent doing, uh, being a, an investment officer, being a chief financial officer, a, a career in finance, that people said, yeah, I, I think that we should have someone with that skill set responsible for a large part of our fiscal operations. That was encouraging. I read about this, um, I, and excuse me if I have the wrong term, but I'm just going to phrase it this way, you, this town hall tour you've been on. You've gone, you've gone out to speak in the community about finances in the state because you think it's important that people understand that. 
And there was a point when you talked about OPM, other people's money, mm -hmm. and that the state relies too much on other people's money. I thought that's what government did. I thought all, that's all they did was rely on other people's <laughs> money. It, that's not true? Um, well, let's say that, yes, it is true that the government has confiscatory powers over where it gets its money from. We don't right. necessarily enter into as willing participants the idea that uh, we, you can pay your taxes or not. So on one hand, you're right that uh, as Delawareans, uh, we don't get to choose whether uh, we pay uh, uh, for the state's goods and services every year. But when I say other people's money, um, states get money from both domestic, i.e. their own people, and they get uh, money from what we call exported sources, meaning generally operations that might be of corporations or people that live outside the state. And Delaware, when you look at the data, has a very substantial portion of our general fund, what we call our operating budget, that comes from resources that we don't technically let's say, control, own, um, uh, and if we're worried a little bit about our fortunes as a people and where we're, our long-term sustainability comes from, it worries me as a fiscal officer that we've grown maybe overly reliant on sources of revenue to fund this enterprise that, that are not our own. Uh, you're talking about unclaimed funds and you're talking about franchise fees as they the two you're, things? Corporation franchise has been around a long time, over 100 years. The fact that the Fortune 500 choose to choose to domicile themselves here. Um, and that's, we offer a value proposition, right? We do have courts of chancery. We have uh, good decision making processes that allow companies to know what our laws are and how, especially for corporations that might have um, disputes, let's say, between boards or managers and shareholders, we have a very good system for resolving those issues in our corporate law. So we offer a value proposition for companies to, to incorporate here. And that is, that is 25 to 30% of our, our general fund revenue comes from that source. Um, and yeah, I would categorize that as, if you want to use my term from uh, my speaking tour, OPM, other people's money. Yeah, that's one source. Um, but Abandoned property is a second very large one. It's been as high as as high as 15%. It's back down to a little bit low, below 10% of our general fund now. But that really is a source of money that, that comes from this corporate franchise, but it's, it's from all those companies that have shareholders where dividend or distribution checks get sent out or, or mailed and never find their rightful owner. And it's owner. shaky, too. I mean, it's, it's constantly going to be challenged because other states want that money. People have wanted our corporation franchise. The abandoned property is fruit of the same tree, if you think about it. We wouldn't have the abandoned property if we didn't have the corporate franchise. Um, and people have been after our corporate franchise for a very long time now. I mean, frankly, New Jersey stole it from New York, and we stole it from New Jersey back before, I think, the turn of the uh, 20th century. And it's conceivable that someone could steal it from you. And because it's conceivable that somebody can steal it from you, neither of those funds, which make up over half, is that right, of the funds that come in are sustainable. Well, I uh, let's let's back up a little bit. I wouldn't say they're not sustainable. There's always going to be competition for our franchise, but our franchise is exceptionally strong. And we have not sort of, we haven't, one thing we haven't done is we haven't overpriced the franchise. So if you're a company and you're a Fortune 500 company, and you can domicile in Delaware for $200,000 a year, roughly speaking, um, and you get certainty of the execution of our laws and the certainty of um, expedited hearings on you know, matters that might be adjudicated, and you look at around what the other states offer, you can make a cost-benefit decision. Most CFOs around the country are going to choose Delaware because of the court system we have, because of the clarity of laws we have, and because we charge a fair price for what we do. And we try to just keep that price maybe in line with inflation over the time. We don't try to charge an exorbitant amount for the premium service that we offer, right? Um, but in other things like the abandoned property that has been a function of having this corporation franchise, the fact that this money that otherwise should go to shareholders doesn't find shareholders always, or the fact that a gift card doesn't get fully you know, used at Starbucks, um, the fact that that money reverts to Delaware over time, you should think that maybe if we had the corporation franchise, that would travel along and be just a companion part of it. But we've been very aggressive on that front over years because it's, it's money that doesn't cost our Other taxpayers. Other states have been aggressive as well, coming after you for that money. We have to take yep. a break. We'll continue our conversation with State Treasurer Ken Simpler when the Delaware Way continues right after this.